Okay, welcome to our winter wreath project. Um, pardon my schmutz on the table there. This is a project where you can take the holes that are drilled in here and you can attach different little um, banners that go across. This is the one for Christmas time. It's deck the halls. I've got little lights going around in front of him. We put him aside and we get our little snow buddies going on here. Okay, and so he, these guys are just little pals and they are for January. And then finally, and I put it down someplace, we've got our Valentine's one. So the last final month of winter is Valentine's and we've got our little lovebirds and it's home tweet home. So I hope you enjoy the project. It is a lot of fun and this is just a neat way to have something that marks each month but you don't have to take down the big wreath and you can celebrate winter but vary it and not keep the same thing up. You can hang the wreath on the door just as a wreath itself, or you can um, you can do these embellishments. We've got a couple cute new products that, um, besides all of our wires and things like that, these are little wire lights. That um, this is an LED light that is embedded inside a little bit of silicone stuff, and these are wire. And no, you're not going to get electrocuted, but you can crimp them and make them stay whichever way you want them to be. And I thought, wouldn't it be just wonderful? And I'm just going to lay this on here just for the effect. Okay. Wouldn't it be wonderful to wrap these within your wreath, especially if you had like the lights that I had um, on the Deck the Halls guy. And then this little dude right here is, he's actually got a timer. So I can set it on at like say 5 o'clock at night and it will come on every night at 5 o'clock. And I had one of these at Christmas time in my house, and the batteries lasted for about a month, coming on every day for eight hours. So they're really, really efficient. Um, but look how bright. Watch this. Isn't that just amazing? And because it's in a battery pack, you could put it behind your wreath, and it's all self-contained. You don't have to have any cords and stuff like that coming out. Just another one of the really cool um, advances they're making in craft supplies. I just love, love, love these lights. Hope you enjoy the project. With any MDF product, the first thing that you want to do is you want to seal all the sides. So I'm going to use multi-purpose sealer, which does a phenomenal job of sealing um, multiple surfaces. So I'll go ahead and I'll just use my big brush and I'll brush on a nice even thin coat. Okay, so when I'm stroking on my paint with a cut edge like this, I stroke away to the edge where my brush can flip off. And it's a cute little um, just quick tip to um, help you um, not have to do a lot of cleanup. Okay, so I'm going to take, um, I've got my board um, sealed, I'm going to take a 50-50, nope, a one um, ultra blue deep and three titanium white. And we're going to just mix that to a value five. And we'll go ahead and just roll it on. Now I'm going to roll towards my edge so that I don't end up with a lot of dripping. And we'll get one coat on there and let it dry. Okay, then we're going to re-roll. And while it's wet, then we'll slip slap in. So I'll come back to you as soon as I get this rolled. Okay, and then we are going to slip slap with just straight Ultra Blue Deep using our brush. A little bit of a mix. And right at the edges, I'm going to get up here and stand up right at the edges where things are going to get darker. We'll go ahead and just slip slap off. Make sure you're flipping to your edge. And then you want to blend it up through the middle. Got to kind of work quickly. The paint needs to stay wet, and if you dry, then go ahead and re-wet with your um, roller. Otherwise you're just base coating and you're not blending. that kind of blended. You can pick up your base color and blend back into it if you feel like things are kind of taken over. Okay then while we're still wet we pick up a little bit of Prussian blue and just deepen within that parameter. 
Once again, you can pick up the other color and blend into those. Okay, I'm blending in. Try the ultra blue down. That just tones down the edges, sinks everything in. Okay, and then wherever we don't have a good blend, we can go back. on some nitrile gloves and these will keep my hands clean because I'm going to use a sea sponge. Now I've got a dampened sea sponge. I'm going to go into um, Indian turquoise and I'm going to twist and pounce throughout there and I don't want to make any kind of pattern. Okay, so you got to be really careful about the pattern. and twisting and pouncing and dragging and schmudging is really good. Okay, get out there on the edge. Now we'll go into some Indian turquoise. And we want to just really kind of blend that. I'm tippling sideways and this way and that way and kind of making like a little kind of star path I go back to it and blend by pushing and dragging. Go into the back end and just blend into those blues without any color, but it just messes up the the texture. And this is kind of like the frozen kind of look. Okay, and I think we might be able to go a little bit more with some white. We want to make sure our snowflakes show in the end, but I think we'll go just a little bit more with white. just kind of mess and meld everything together. I'll go back into a little bit of the desert turquoise. we've got a good look I think we'll go ahead and let it dry okay when choosing my colors for a project I've made a book of colors that have all the deco art colors and when they get discontinued I put a D and scratch them out but I keep them in the book so if I need to match something that's called for in an old pattern I know what the color looks like so um, anyway but when I'm looking for my colors I want something that will retire on my for the snowflakes something that'll settle back a little so I need to be if you want something to be like the background, you need to make it be like the color of the background. So, if you want it to disappear, you make it like the background. And these are just business cards. Um, sorry, I'm bopping around here. These are business cards, and they're in um, baseball card sleeves. Okay, so I'm looking for... These get into the concrete or the patio paints. I'm looking for my blue family. Or my gray family. 
Okay, so I'm looking here, and winter blue might be a nice touch. So I'm going to take this out. And that might be just a little too blue. Kind of was thinking slate gray. Okay, so I tested both of the colors that I got out. I got Blue Haven and um, Winter Blue, and notice that this one is much more kind of a clearer color, and this is much more gray. I think I'm going to go with the gray for my background, um, my disappearing snowflakes. We need a paper towel and a big dome brush. Dome brushes are affordable and wonderful, and you need them in many sizes. So they're cheap, cheap, cheap. So now what we're going to do is dry off all the paint over here, and then we'll just scumble. And rub those on. And we'll make little soft, disappeary type snowflakes. Okay. Make sure you bring them off the edges. Some are going to be strong, some will be softer. Okay, so don't worry about um, like them all being the same. And by scumbling them, they end up being a little bit more transparent or a little bit more like a softer look. Fuzzier. And sometimes I just use the stencil how it lies. Okay, yeah, that's making a lovely kind of background effect. I want to be careful not to use too many of these really fine ones for the background because I don't think they'll show up very well. Oops, that would be really fuzzy. Pick up more paint, dry it off your paper towel. Spread snowflake awesomeness all over the place. If you want really clean lines when you're stenciling, then what you'll do is you'll use, um, you'll pounce and do that, and that will make them much more clean looking. Okay, and then we're looking for repetition. We don't want to bring the same snowflakes in in the same positions everywhere, and we want to not have the same size as well. So we've got medium, medium little 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 medium 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 so we want to spread some littles in between our, our medium stuff so maybe we can bring and we don't want them to line up either so let's bring this guy up to the edge and this guy down here do that guy over here oops So I've kind of moved a little bit away from using Tacket in the background when I don't need super clean. Um, because these are scumbly, I don't need to use a, a repositionable adhesive, so it's just a step I don't need to do. But if I want something to be perfect, then I absolutely use the Tacket over and over, which is a repositionable adhesive. And that didn't show up, so I think I'll do one of these medium-sized guys. All right, now we got to make some dreamy happen. So we're going to take our dirty brush and load in some Indian turquoise. We're going to do this before we do the white snowflakes. And we want to kind of just make a trail of fluffy, moving stuff. Don't want it to be like where you can tell exactly what's going on. Make it move around the piece. You can make it be wide in some places and skinny in others. Just want to kind of tone and soften that color down.
squint your eyes a lot. Okay, and that's making oh, that's making it really pretty. And that'll settle down all these snowflakes in the back. To maybe just a little bit with the white. <clears throat> and that's dirty brush, which means our white is going to look like a lighter version of our Indian turquoise. And then we'll bring that skinnier. But then notice I'm going much faster. I just want to hit kind of the high points. Don't want to make like, too much of a walking trail. looking really nice and dreamy. Okay, now let's see if we can go, let's see if we need some spatters first before we do snowflakes. Um, let's go spatters in white. Spattering the whole universe right here. Just walk it along the trail. Okay, that kind of gives it just a little bit more startle. Let's go into our dark color. Okay, we're going to go ahead and spatter around the outer edge. If you spatter up high, it acts more like snow. Okay, and I think we'll go ahead and spatter with, maybe with Indian turquoise as well. Looking for a very layered kind of look. Soft and layery. Okay, that's getting kind of magical. Okay, now we're going to stipple and patting off on our, um, our paper towel. These are going to be more solid stencils. Let's take a look at how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll look really good. decide if I want to have some sparkle on there. Let's see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Glamour Dust Ultra Fine Glitter Paint in Ice Crystal. And we're going to, after we do the white, we'll go in with the Glamour Dust Glitter Paint. And this will make glittery snowflakes that will be kind of low-key. We can add some like uber awesome snowflakes after. Okay, so that'll dry kind of really beautiful. Okay, and then I'll repeat with other snowflakes around. Okay, I've kind of decided that I want to go a little bit overboard with my stencils, so I'm really kind of bringing them in from edges, and I'm going to go back and glitter some at the end. So I want to just kind of let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And just really deepen those the different kinds. Don't have like stencils with like stencils. And that's really getting to be kind of snowy and awesome. And you can take, when your brush is kind of running out of paint, you can take a couple of really soft white ones to make it just be a little bit background, a little bit foreground. 
and they don't have to be full. It's just really going to fill up the area. Just layer on until you like it, I think. I think I like it. Okay, so now I've got my snowflakes about where I want them. I'm going to go back into my white. And I want to scumble a little bit more near my edge. I don't want that edge to be quite so strong as it is. Storm. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. I'm looking at my art to see how he's going to look on there and bring the blue, the Indian turquoise, out to our outer edge just a little bit. Here and there, just to soften some of those places. Framing is good, but if it's too dark, it'll be just too much. So I'll leave some of the points dark and then suck in some of it. Put your eyes. Yeah, that crystallizes things just a little bit better. Now into some white, aka light crystal or light Indian turquoise. And now let's do our dreamy thing just a little bit more. So make a little path. I'm kind of going high, low, high, low. Don't make polka dots. I think we can spatter one more time. some magic moments happening within our snowflakes. If you anchor and tap right above, it'll fall kind of right on the snowflakes. I think that's perfect. 
Okay, I've got six little snowflakes and I'm going to use this wonderful mushroom sponge. This is um, multi-sided. I can use the big side. I can use the edge for um, trimming finials and dowels. I can use the bottom and I can go ahead and so what I'm going to do is load into some white. Just hold on to this edge. I've got a little bit of my um, Bahama Blue on my brushes or my applicator as well. And I'll just tap and rotate and you've never base coated so easily in your whole entire life. Especially with all these little cut edges. This makes it a snap. And you can do big surfaces with it. It comes in a set of two. Um, so you have multiple sizes. It is a universally awesome piece of equipment. Okay, when it's time, I'm going to display my wreath in this stand. Okay, so it's got a little A-frame kind of thing that stands up like that. It's got a decorative top and a lovely bottom for it. Let me show you how the wreath looks. The wreath pops right on in there, and what's neat about it, the size is, and it would lean, of course, just a little bit, but it's enough for there to be a little bit of stuff at the top, and I like that a lot. And then our little guy is going to fit right in front here. Okay, so he'll hide the fact that there's a stand back there, and then I can put it on the tabletop in my family room, which is where I want it. So, I don't like the black color though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a product that it comes in three colors, it should be all three. It's called Glitter Blast. Okay, so this is how you can spray paint something like iron or something like that and um, make it prettier or a different color. So I'm going to use a white spray paint and then I'm going to cover it with the glitter. Um, stuff so that I get a wintry kind of look and then I can use this in the spring with my more um, white Easter ornaments and things like that. Okay I think I can dig a little snowflake action with some we're gonna put snow riders on one side okay and just kind of drip it around don't put it everywhere put it like it just hit the edge of the thing and then we'll use our bead and glitter glue to bring that down from there so it's not going to be white, it's just going to be kind of a clear color. And I'm going to sprinkle, I've got my little needle nose applicator, I'm going to sprinkle some Glamour Dust on one side and some crushed glass glitter, and it's not really glass, um, on the other. And then that's going to make these really cute little snowflakes that we can kind of layer in and out and that'll give it a little bit more dimension. Okay, I've added rhinestones, my um, glittery little dudes, and some wonderful um, crushed glass glitter in the background. And the way we're gonna put on the crushed glass glitter is we're going to remove all the other hoosies. Actually, I think I'm gonna glue down my rhinestones how I have them right now. I'm just gonna use the bead and glitter glue and I'll just put a little mound underneath and it dries clear so that'll be perfect for them. I've got these awesome little tools that will you just squeeze them together and they just pick those up and you can just push down on it. It's a little bit like opposite of what you think so it takes a little getting used to. Anyway, so I can just pick them up, take them away, put my glue down, and put them back. Pretty cool stuff. Whoops. Don't do that. Yeah. Alright, to get my varnish to stick where I want it to stick, I'm going to use um, Ultra Matte Varnish. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I haven't got, I don't want it to resist in a sheen. So I don't want to see where I've put my varnish. So I want it to be like invisible varnish, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to put some of that down, and then I'm going to take my crushed glass glitter. I'm just going to drizzle it where I put my varnish. And some of it's going to fall off and some of it's going to stick, but I'm not going to worry about it. And it looks so cool. Okay, I just wanted you to see how cool, I don't know if you can see the reflection or not, but this it's got this beautiful glittery sheen that's all over and it doesn't crumble off and stuff. And it is going to look awesome with my wreath, and it'll be photographed that way. So, um, great way to learn how to um, transform your metal pieces. All right, we're getting ready to do our Snow Buddies topper, and I'm going to put some multi-purpose sealer on it. I'm going to use a large oval glaze brush, 
and I'm going to brush to the edge and sweep off the edge and that will prevent anything from dripping over the edges. <clears throat> when you use sealer to seal your projects, do back and front and that will prevent your projects from warping or having any kind of weather um, interactions if you're going to hang things outside. Uh, one key point that people don't ever talk about is a sealer makes a paint, a sealer and a varnish make a paint sandwich. Okay, in a paint sandwich, what happens is, is the sealer is designed to grab the wood. Okay, so it's going to do whatever it does to hold on to that wood. The paints are designed to grab into the sealer, and the varnish is made to grab onto the paint. So what you're doing is you're creating this little paint sandwich that is perfectly chemically aligned to do what it's supposed to do. If you skip this step, then um, then you're just going to cause yourself some problems. So you always want to seal, and then you can make your perfect paint sandwich. All right, we're going to mix a little bit of our Prussian blue with some Indian turquoise. I just kind of want to create just a little bit of a muddy blue, kind of like about one and one actually. We're going to put it in the banner area, and I'm not going to worry about it going over. Um, into the other areas. Just get that nice and base coated. Maybe just a little bit darker, so I'll do a second base coat just a slightly darker. This time of year, I've got my heater running in my um, painting studio, so I'm going to use that as my dryer. I just lean this little guy right in front, and it'll take care of drying, and I don't have to use the blow dryer. Okay, now I'm going to base coat black green up to um, the edge of where the snowflakes and stuff start going. And that's just going to be where my greenery is. So I just want there to be some dark something or another back there. Alright, I'm going to use this stencil for base coating. And I've got little locating lines here so that you can, so that I can, just figure out exactly where the pieces go. Okay, then I'm going to take my dome brush. I'm going to go into slate gray, and then this is the key to clean stenciling. After I apply my paint, I've got a big old glom on there, I'm going to come over here onto my paper towel and I'm going to tap off the excess. Then I'm going to gently tap straight up and down on the area where I'm going to go right around my edge. I kind of want that just to get a nice clean little line and then I'll start coming into the middle. This will take two coats at least. Okay, and I'll go ahead and let that dry and then I'll come back with another coat. As I'm waiting for paint to dry, I'm shaking up my white and realized I needed a new label on top of it. It makes it so much easier to find. These are um, DecoArt Americana labels and they've got the number and the name on top. And then what I do is I take my color and then when I have it out, I just put a little swash of the color down, or swatch I guess, of the color on there so that when I'm looking at my bottle I can tell what color it is, I can have the name and I have the number. I have all that information in one place. Um, they're really affordable and what I do when I run out of one color is I just take this lid off and swap it with my new one. That way I don't have to have a whole bunch of new labels unless I make a mistake in which case is what I've done. I have um, a couple of bottles without so I needed a new set of labels. Okay, because we have a little bit of overlap with our scarf and our hats, we don't want a rim or an edge at the top. So I'm just going to gently sand that so that it's less, less of a thing. And I'll sand here as well before I get any of the top details on. And I'll do the same to my two birds. Um, they're base, co base coated sorry, in antique rose. Okay, so we are going to go into some gray sky. And you could treat your snowman snowy and stipple his highlights, or you can treat him smooth and dry rub his highlights. You could do either way. But what I'm going to do 
is do the smooth way. I'm going to use my stencil as a mask. Okay, and so I'll just start building my highlights right up the middle. And stretch them out. Build that a little bit more. This is gray sky. You want to be careful about digging a hole if you're um, dry rubbing is really uh, fresh. You can sometimes the wet paint and the wet paint bond together and you can dig a little hole. Okay, now let that dry for just a second. I'll continue with gray sky one more time. And make sure you're rubbing off enough. Uh, see what I'm doing right there? Do you see that hole? Let me hit it with the blow dryer a little longer. Okay, and the way we get rid of the hole is we just kind of go back in there and just stipple just a little bit to mask it. And then I'll let that dry. Okay, now we're ready to do some more highlighting. Of course, my paint is dry. Okay, we've got another coat of white to do. We'll dip our brush into um, the white paint I don't have out yet. So busy talking about the paint just a minute ago that I forgot. Okay, so, and then this one is still sealed and it's fresh and I've got these little pop tops. If you use the corner of it, it will catch and it actually tears the plastic, which is fantastic because these are always a pain in the butt to do. And then you can paint these. You can use a little paint adhesion medium and you can paint the plastic but you can paint them as, and give them as little gifts to your fellow painters. They make a very nice little gift. Okay and then I'm going to take white dirty brush Okay, and then I'll go and I'll keep this centered within that other highlight. Okay, I'll let that dry. Repeat with white. Okay, and then we're going to go into our shading. We'll take another crescent brush and we'll flip to a clean side and we'll go into graphite. Okay, this is where I'm going to hold my, um, my mat, my um, mask down. And I'll just shade around the edges. Oops. A little bit softer. You want to make sure you're really dried off when you've got a big contrast paint. Coming in. And then as the paint fades off, then you just increase the pressure and bring it up. Gonna repeat. And now I'll go stronger. <coughs> Pardon me. And now let's go into one of these Italian sash brushes. These have a really open little weave, and I want to get a little bit of that snow texture. So I'm just going to stipple and really pants it out. Okay, and then I'll go over both straight up and down.
And then I'll get into a little bit of white and really tap that off, I'll walk it all over my palette. Maybe even pounce it on. Oops. We'll fade that out. Turn my brush as I go. Just looking for a nice, even texture. Okay. All right, we're going to do our birds highlights with Terra Coral. Okay, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the snowman. Now with the bird tail, get that off of there, we can go right down and start creating form-following um, shapes. So what we'll do is we'll just use that as a screen. And we'll leave a little space in between that little tail. And so already you can see that you have definition. My goal with um, these techniques where we use stencils and screens is just to make the painting faster and easier. Um, the less work I have to do when I'm painting, the more I like it. I don't like to um, trace, I don't like to do all that stuff, so if I can just use something that is pre-done for me, I'm going to be real happy with that. Okay, so I'll go down the tail. And it seems like we might want something a little brighter. We'll go ahead and go with Coral Shell. And see who's ready for brightening. I like to scumble with um, a little whirlwind action better than um, just straight dry rubbing because the straight dry rubbing kind of tends to leave a little path. Okay, now within that. And then we'll go back again on his face. And I sense I'm digging that little hole. And we can also go and just do a little dry brush action where we leave that texture. Okay, and that's going to give us just a little bit of birdie feather movement. Okay, and I like that. And I'll hit the blow dryer. Okay, we're back for more. that just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go into the other bird, but while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to flip my towel over and I'll take um, Heritage Brick and I'll go down the middle of his tail just a little bit. And then I'm going to want it shaded down over here. And so I'll just go right over my highlights and it'll just kind of glaze everything. Okay. That's where that tail goes down into um, the back of the bird or whatever. Let's see, it's going to have some. Yeah, I guess it's the back of the bird. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with his face. Brush off any spare little feathers or uh, fluffy little hairs as you see them. We'll go into just a touch of um, soft black. And we'll repeat. Let's see if we can if we're dry enough. And you want this to be repeated but not so strong. Okay, see how that's really giving us some details. Okay, 
And over here on the sides, he's going to be much darker. Okay, so I think that we'll call that done. Okay, and that's our little bird so far. All right, I'm going to take my area where my snowflakes are, and I'm going to use a fingertip dauber. And before I get too much more detail going here, I'm going to go ahead and just base what would be the snowflake with white. I want them to look like the other snowflakes on the thing. So first I'll get them white. Let's see how far down. Line art. Okay, it goes behind his ear, so just get that over there. The fingertip dauber allows for the paint not to go over the edge where it's all cut out. So I'll just get it all the way down, so then I can base coat over the top. I'll bring it right up to his head. Do the same for the other one. These just wash right out with, um, with just plain water. I pop mine in the um, in my brush basin as well, and then wait until I'm ready to wash all my brushes. Okay, we got some greenery coming out here, so we'll just get that close. I'll come in with a little round brush to get the right up next to him. Okay, and then we'll make sure that we're based. I, this is turning a little bit yellow like the background, so we'll base it one more time. And then we'll glitter this at the end when we after we varnish and stuff. Oops, careful. Okay, now I'm going to um, use Indian turquoise. And these earmuffs are going to be like a turquoisey blue color. And so I don't want to put the turquoise hint down here by the turquoise. I'm going to put it up here so it contrasts with that. And then the white can contrast with that color. So I'll start at the tips and do it darker. And then about halfway, I'll fade out to nothing. And then I can go back in and do it even stronger, like it's almost a base coat up here. And fade that towards the, the soft. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, we've got pattern stencils that come in um, a set. You can order them individually as well. But you've got all your different checks and stars and diamonds and confetti and jungle print and polka dots and random polka dots and all the things. Um, we love the idea of keeping this collection together um, with this little hole on the side. Um, these little pins just unscrew and I'll get it there. And then you can add more. And we've started um, to put, because we think this is such a great idea, we started to put a hole in the corner of all of them so that if you had um, word stencils and you wanted them all clipped together, you could just, and you could punch a hole with a hole punch as well. But um, you can put all your um, themed stencils together. Like if you have clocks, you could put all your clock ones together for storage. And then you would know, like, hey, this is where my clock ones are, instead of having the stencils all in big piles and stuff like that. But I'm going to use some of my, um, I'm not sure which ones yet. I think I might be using the confetti on my snowman's hat. Maybe some checks if I can get by with it. Um, but yeah, I, I know I want to use some texture or some, um, some detail. Okay, we're going to put some, let's see what color do we have here, milk chocolate. On our hat, tap away from the edge, and in the middle you can just use nice and sloppy paint. When you've got big areas like this, you just start in the middle, and then by the time you get to the edge, you don't need to pounce off any of the paint. I've got my face lined up because it's part of the hat and placement is perfect. So I'm going to go into a little bit of graphite 
and do the eyes and the mouth. Even if you just scumbled to mark them, then you don't have to trace. So this is like it's a, a work saver depending on how far you want to take it. You can shade, highlight, you can do whatever you want, but um, definitely easier than getting out the tracing paper and all the stuff. If you stencil, you'll get a little bit cleaner edge than if you um, do the rubbing technique. That's not if you stencil, it's if you pounce. So pouncing is the up and down, and then the rubbing is the other way. So pouncing will give you a cleaner edge. Okay, now we're gonna go into um, Honey Brown. Is that the right name? Yeah, Honey Brown. I'm gonna do some highlighting on the hat. Got a bigger dome brush this time because it's a big area. And I don't mind if this gets a little textury. And I think I'll even encourage that little textury by going ahead and doing some fairly strong texture through the um, sticky mesh. And I get some nice um, winter weave kind of on his hat. We'll get that dry and then I'll use the same brush that I've wiped out to do the shading. Okay, I'm going to go into Heritage Brick and I'm going to neutralize the color which means I'm going to wipe it all out and then reload and then wipe it all out and that will take care of that lighter color that was in my brush. I go around the outer edge so by doing your dark over the top of your um, your highlights, it an ends up glazing down the details, and it actually looks like you worked really, really hard to get the effect. Okay, now I'm going to go over the top of where my band is going to be, so that I got my um, shadow already there. And then we'll pick up that little bit of the soft black. And we'll do each edge. And underneath where the ball goes. Okay, this is where I'll take out the stencil. I think. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think maybe these little random stars. And this is where I also will take my stencils apart. Put, let's just put some random little guys here. Oops, and we're going to need to probably highlight those, so let's use a little butterscotch. They're not showing up too well. Line back up, go into my butterscotch, and I'll highlight to the inside edge. Okay, and then we'll do a nice bright highlight right in the middle. And we might want to tap on that just to tone him down just a little bit. Cute, 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 cute. Okay, and trying to do this all random. Don't forget.
forget to let some of them drip off the edges like it's wrapped around his head. Yeah, I think that'll do. And I want to make him a little bit brighter. Tapped him down just a little bit too much. Okay, we're going to use Honey Brown. And we're going to stipple his brim. His folded up little hat. We'll do two coats of this. Now if you want a slightly different look, you can apply your shadow as a stipple. You can put it strong on one side and then just lighten it up. And the neat thing is you can do this wet and wet. You might need to repeat a little bit to strengthen it, but it makes a really nice effect as far as dragging the shading in. I go into a little bit of the um, burnt Nope, that's not burnt, it's a um, heritage brick while it's wet and do that. And if you think you're just a little bit like liney, then just go into your base color and blend it back in. Or feather it out some more into eternity like I just did. Okay, we'll go into our sticky mesh again and this time we'll pick up a little bit of our butterscotch We'll go kind of shape following, just to give it that texture. And now let's see if we like it. I think we could use a little bit more. Okay, and you can see that I'm going to need to do a little bit more shading and stuff, but that's okay. This just gets us the, the basics done. Okay, this is when you start balancing things out just a little bit. I'm going to bring up my whites just a little bit. And I can scumble right over the face and stuff, but now I've got it marked and I can just um, rebase or replace my stencil over the top and do it that way. Okay, yeah, I just want him just a teeny bit brighter. Right there in the middle, that's going to help everything show better. The texture. And we can go into our um, red. Go into the antique rose and we can give them some little cheeks. Just a little bit. Because all snowmen need to be having blushing cheeks. Alright, we'll go on and we'll do honey brown on our little guy's scarf. We'll do two coats. Alright, while it's wet, I'm going to go ahead and go into some butterscotch. And I'll just highlight up the middle. And I'll repeat. I'll wipe my brush out and I'll pick up some of this lovely milk chocolate and I'll go ahead and bring some shading. Maybe I'll do milk chocolate plus a little bit of soft black because it's not showing very much. <clears throat> do it strongest at the edge and then I'll wipe that out and go pick up a little bit more milk chocolate. got the earmuffs. I've changed the color of the hat by the way that's plantation pine and then we're gonna dry rub the earmuffs with some soft blue and we'll take our um, Prussian blue and we'll apply a little bit of shading Careful when you get around to where the this band is. Okay. 
You can go back and you can put a little bit more highlight in. I often neutralize that brush. Yeah, I'll probably just highlight with. Let's go put some texture in. Yeah, that looks really cute. Okay, I'm going to create a little pattern with the, this little guy. Let's create a little stripe. I better go fix that one. Go back and brighten it up the middle. We'll go back into our mix of blue. And stipple this in while it's wet. Okay. I like that little bit of pattern there. Alright, I'm going to dry brush using just a little round, a little pro round, on his scarf. Just to focus those highlights, diffuse a little bit of the texture, bring a little bit of movement. And then we'll do the same thing over the top of his little earmuffs. Dry brushing allows that kind of streaky fade. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and we'll dry brush in with the shading as well. So we'll get a little mix of heritage and soft black. <clears throat> Just like one to one. And that'll continue that movement. Put my hand in something wet here. Okay, so when you have your hand in something wet, it means you're not dry, so just go ahead and grab your clear bridge. And then you can continue painting. Okay. wrap-around effect. I like it. Okay. I've got the scarf painted in Heritage Brick and I'm thinking that I'm thinking I have an extremely dirty brush. Hmm. Okay, when you have a brush, and this is, like, I don't know if you can, let's get you in close, if you can see this. Okay, I am pushing, whoops, wrong direction. I am pushing super duper hard, and if you can see, only these couple little hairs are bending at all. And this whole area right here is, like, hard, okay? So we're going to use the brush cleaner and restorer. This will save you, like, this brush alone costs, like, $7, I think. This is... Four dollars or five dollars or something like that it will save you seven dollars just on your very first brush so watch what happens so we just put it in there and this is a really safe stuff to use it's non-hazardous biodegradable low vapor all that so watch I'll put it my brush in there and I'll press and you can instantly see that I've got paint coming out and then pretty soon you can see that I'll be able to move my paintbrush this is a brush groomer it's porcelain some types of plastics, um, not all types, but some types of plastics don't like this cleaner because paint is in essence a plastic. <laughs> so um, I like to use the porcelain groomer so that we don't have any, any bad things happen. So then this part right here, when you get it softened, this 
they have little spikes on them and they'll dig um, the stuff out of the ferrule or out of the upper part of the brush. And you never want to go back and forth. You just want to go one direction, lift up, lift up, lift up. Okay, but we're not soft enough to really use this yet. Okay, and just take a, just a couple minutes to do. It's absolutely the best stuff. Like, um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be working on this for a few minutes, probably about, I don't know, maybe 10, but not to bore you. Okay, this is where I've got my brush. Now I can bend the bristles. There's still quite a bit of stuff. I don't know what I was thinking with this brush. The dry rubbing technique, and you can see now I've got a whole new color coming out. I've got like a blue color. And I've got just about enough paint in here to base coat a house. So, and you'll notice that you'll just release layer after layer of, even when you think your brush is clean, it's not. This is awesome to use just as your normal routine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wash this brush and wash my gunk off of here. And um, it's good enough for me to use, and then I can retreat it later when I do all my brushes. Okay, and then this is my paintbrush. Can you see that it's nice and soft and splaying out awesomely and not hard knocking? So, and I keep those, um, the brush groomer over by my sink. I have one there, and then I keep one in here as well, but I use them to just use the water and so I'm not um, using my hands. My hands get real dried out because of how much I paint. Um, so yeah, I use the groomer just even if I don't use the cleaner and restorer. All right, we're going to take um, Holly Green. And I didn't like how drab his hat was looking up there, so I'm going to take some Holly Green and we'll brighten him up just a little bit up here. Okay, and from there we'll go into festive green. And we're gonna have to dry it. Okay, next we'll go into festive green. Brighten that up a little bit. And then let's go into a little bit of our olive green. And it gives us our texture. And we'll brighten it up to the top. We'll repeat with some dry rubbing right over the texture. I think we'll call that a self-shading hat right there. Yeah. Sometimes that's the nicest way to do it is to go ahead and just start out with your darkest color and then just bring up the highlights. Okay, we're going to deepen our shading on our hat rim here with burnt umber. Just going to walk that in. time over here with a little heavier color. Sometimes I sneak up on things just a little bit too much. And then I'll mop. You want things to look like they're wrapping around his head there. And I'm just going to highlight their little noses with some marigold. And just kind of more touching the tip of their nose and everybody's going to get that same treatment I'm using a little short bright brush which is the kind of brush you want to use when you need really good control let's go ahead with a little bit of that marigold and just brighten up a few areas Yeah, I'm going to do something up here on this hat, but I haven't decided what yet. 
Okay, we're gonna float on the noses with some um, milk chocolate. Okay, that'll sink that down just a little bit. And then I think let's go ahead and shade on the birds. Hmm. Let's start with Heritage Brick. Yeah, that's a perfect color. Shade underneath this little beak. And in the case of our muff guy, let's give him a nice shadow under with the Heritage Brick. And then I want to red up our birds just a little bit, so I want to bring in, I think I'll dry rub this with some country red. Okay, so what I want to do is just bring this country red in like a glaze up the tail. the head. I'm going to redify them just a little bit. Yeah, that's better. See what the difference is between the two of them. And we'll repeat on the other side. Okay, let's try going in with a little bit. I don't know if Country Red's going to do it, so we'll just try this and we'll see. Inner shadow area on this brim. Let's go ahead and bring, yeah, that's better, some country red in. Yeah, that makes me much, much happier. And let's bring just a little bit of country red in up on the green. Just to give it a little sparkle of the same thing. We're going to go into our terra coral which is my new favorite red highlighting color and the coral shell. And we'll go ahead and dry rub on his scarf. And he's gonna need this center area brighter. Where it's raised will be brighter, so I'll start in these areas, work my way away. So down here where this tilts, we won't have that be as bright, and then we'll bring it back up again, right when it sticks out front. This will be just kind of a retired little highlight, and then we can increase. go into tarot, uh, coral shell. Make sure I'm not. And right about now is where I reach for the sticky mesh and make that happen, huh? I think we'll go ahead and get it shaded first. Actually, you know what? We won't. We'll go ahead and use the sticky mesh because then I can shade over the top of whatever I do. admit that sticky mesh is kind of fun and magical. Let's soften. And a little bit over here. Okay, and now let's go ahead and neutralize our brush with 
go into, we're based in heritage bricks. So I'll neutralize with heritage brick. And I guess we're going to have to go into our country red. And I'll red up the scarf. Then we'll go into soft black plus country red. And we'll float that over there after I do the dry brushing. Take that off of the scarf, that's the top part. Okay, and I think we'll start floating now. Just go right into soft black, which will be nice and sheer. I'll go right next to that a line, which will end up looking like it was um, part of the shading. Same thing on this side. Be careful about shading on your snowflake. Okay, we need to shade at the top here. looking lovely. And let's go ahead and give a shade at the top. All the way around here. And we'll shade underneath here where it's going to be fringe. And now let's take a round brush and we'll go into our terra coral and let's give it just a little bit a little bit of a stripe maybe even a weave We're going to shade on the snowman underneath his nose with graphite. Okay, and we're going to shade on his, if I can find my color, on his little mouth things. A little bit more water, a little bit more paint. of actually sticking out of his face. And the same thing on his eyes. All right, we're going to shade on little coals right next to the float with lamp black. And on his eyes we're going to shade on the upper We'll go into our white. And give him his 
little sparkly eyes. Okay, and we'll give these guys a bit of pointing at him. We're going to go into a little bit of Butterscotch Plus Marigold for his hat. Got to brighten that up just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll give it the texture with that mix as well. Okay, we're going to use Desert Turquoise on the banner, and let's just go through and give it some nice highlights. See how the circular movement makes a much nicer look. just get this color tickled in here and there. We're going to be cut, carrying some of these colors up into this area right here, so I'm not done yet. Then we'll go into Indian Turquoise. Oops, and spend more time rubbing that out. Get our sticky mesh. We're going to add, I think maybe just a little bit of soft blue as well. Just up that center area. I'm not seeing where that made any difference at all. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, we're going to shade on our banner with some Prussian blue. We'll start where our chalk lines are so that we don't have to worry about wiping them off. Repeat over here. We'll shade along the bottom.
and then we'll repeat at the top. And I think we'll take our triple threat and we'll just get rid of this little line here. I think that's graphite and not triple threat. Triple threat erases with um, with water, but graphite lines do not always. So I just want to make sure you have those lines removed. Okay, a little shade underneath here. Okay, so we're gonna add some snow or some snowflakes with soft blue here and there. They can't be snow buddies without snow. So I'll get some some snowflakes coming in over the tail there on his hat. big snowflake over here. A little bit of something going on here. A repeat of that over here. I've got um, tack it over and over on the back of this stencil, which makes it super easy to kind of mush it around a little bit. Okay, then we're gonna put our Snow Buddies word on here. We're gonna line that up. It's got a line for the bottom of the banner. piece of tape here. Easy to get things shifting. Okay, and I think we'll use the soft blue to do our stencil. And I'll go ahead and tap it in so it's crispy looking. And I'll bring you back when I get done. All right, we're going to put desert turquoise at the base of the letters. Just reload as needed. And we'll go into a little bit of the Prussian blue. of that. Okay, let's take a look and see what we think. Okay, so they're okay, but I think what we can do is we can add some drop shading and it'll improve greatly. So I'll get out my Pro Round going to go into probably lamp black plus the Prussian. Maybe mostly Prussian and let's thin that. And that will add a significant bunch of depth there. The Pro Round brush is excellent because it keeps a flat. 
So you can make it into a flat, it can be a round, it makes perfect strokes. The strokes almost just fall off the brush. Um, you can base coat with them. Pretty tremendous brush. It is worth the money and they last and last, which is really unusual for a round brush. So if you need good control, this is, this is your buddy here. All right, we're gonna stroke the lines for the um, shrubbery with a little bit of um, milk chocolate. And we'll just create um, just some fluffiness with that. And we're gonna take our Raphael brush and our um, plantation pine and we're gonna make a couple of layers of greenery thinning it with water, so it's not behaving very well. Go right on over the elements, which is why we don't have we did them all first. We're going to put some holly green down. I'm you know, not, hmm, not digging that color so much. Let's go into festive green. Yeah, I'm digging the festive green. Okay, we'll get in a little bit closer. And we're gonna go right, if I can find myself here. We're gonna go on the chisel edge of our brush. We'll get a short right here. And we're going to make little chisel, little bows on these things. Don't treat them all the same. Stagger things so some are short and some are long, some are on top, some are not. Okay, just repeat and fill in the area. Don't make everything bright. If you need to go backwards to the um, festive green, you can do that too. Okay, we're going to do some bouncing around with some colors. I'm going to get into some Prussian blue with my short bright, and I want to go ahead and highlight the hat with strong. Russian blue. He still doesn't have a hat band. Okay, come over here to his scarf. I got paints creeping in on me here. Okay, and we'll go ahead and give him some strong Prussian blue and walk it out. I'm to mop. Bring this out the same way on the other side. Okay. And I think I want to take a scumbling brush and I want to take some of our Indian turquoise. And I want to kind of draw colors around a little bit. Okay, so I think I'm going to bring some of my Indian turquoise onto the bird's tails. And I think a little bit on the scarf. And definitely in the, the hat. Okay, then 
go ahead and just streak just a little bit on the scarf. Maybe just a little bit in his face. Okay, he's, look at that, just highlighted just a little bit. A little bit on here and there. I'll draw this color in just a little bit. It's screaming out loud just a teeny bit. Okay. And then we need to do some details on our lettering of some sort. Okay, so I think I want to do some stripes. And just fade them down. And just to give it a little bit of shizawi. All right, we're going to add some bead and glitter glue to our, this is going to dry clear, to our little greenery, and over the top of our glitter tray, sprinkle on little clusters of green crushed glass glitter. And this bead and glitter glue is almost like a glitter, like a glitter magnet. It really does a fine job of hanging on to the glitter. Okay, and I think we might just cluster that. See how nicely that grabbed onto that. This makes these look um, just almost three dimensional. It's really a neat effect. You, you got to kind of see it in person. I don't know that the camera is picking up on. crushed glass glitter is so cool. It just adds more volume and, and interest and it's just really neat. Okay, we're going to add some um, glitter, uh, beaten glitter glue, over on our snowflakes. Trying to decide what to do with. Oh, I've got to clean up my other glitter first. Hang on, you, you can't have green glitter and then have white glitter. So I'll just get out a different tray. I think we can go ahead and. Let's glitter a couple of these little snowflake dudes. Let's see what that looks like. That looks like jewelry on his head. No problem. Okay, so hmm. I think we're gonna have Snowflakes, and oh, it looks a little crowded. We'll just do one down here by the by the buddies. All right, let's get some snow with our snow rider. Okay, and let's give them a little bit of.
for things to know. I wonder if we can make it come off the end of his nose. I don't know if I know how to do that. Okay, let's give. Let me give him just a, a droopy snow kind of blob on top of his head. Snowify some things. Alright, and then we'll go on to our snow buddies, the letters. Let's pull it just a little bit down. They are just in it, aren't they? Okay, I've got these awesome bags of very affordable pom-poms that come in a whole bunch of different sizes. And I cut the back half off of this one, and it doesn't seem to shred, so that's kind of cool. So we're gonna give him just a little bit of texture on his hat, which I think will really add just a neat touch. I'm gonna kind of pull that open so it covers the whole thing, and then stick it down real good to all that wood. Look how cute that looks. Awesome. I love the dimension. I think that is just so much fun. I think the snow rider and the glitter and the little bit of pom-pom. Yeah, I like it. 